Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So, have you ever had any animals on your farm that didn't seem like they wanted to grow? Maybe they looked kind of sickly, um, they were getting scours or diarrhea and you couldn't figure out why, uh, or you just go out there one day and they're dead. Um, this seems to happen to a lot of folks and chances are you're dealing with something that's easily preventable that you don't know anything about. Stay tuned to find out more. So today I want to talk to you about coccidiosis. Um, this may be something that you've heard a little bit about, but you really don't know too much about it. And when you think about coccidiosis, I kind of want you to get in that mindset of a worm load, um, although it's not the same. Coccidiosis isn't actually a worm, but it acts like a parasite. It's actually a protozoa, and it infects lots and lots of different animals. Uh, it can infect dogs, cats, chickens, sheep, goats, horses, all kinds of different animals. Um, as a matter of fact, you may have heard of toxoplasmosis before. We really worry about that with uh, pregnant females. Um, if they're around cat feces, cats actually carry coccidiosis that can cause that toxoplasmosis. Now that toxoplasmosis not only can cause issues with pregnancy in human females, but it can also cause your sheep and your goats to abort as well. So if you do have barn cats around, I want you to make sure that you keep any barn cats cat feces away from your animals and of course any pregnant females should always avoid being around cats as well uh, because that's an issue. So back to the coccidiosis, it's actually a protozoa, um, so it's a parasite, it gets into the body, into the host, the sheep or the goat, and it's actually going to embed itself into the cell wall of the intestines, and it is going to wreak havoc in there. It's actually going to destroy and scar up that intestinal lining, and that has some really negative consequences. Now those negative consequences are that animal can no longer absorb food and nutrients as they normally would. You know, in us as humans and in most animals, the lining of that intestine uh, is actually where most of the nutrients and the vitamins are transferred between the food that we eat into our bodies and it's no different in sheep and goats. So when that lining gets damaged, it can, uh, the animal can't absorb nutrients as well, and that causes all kinds of problems. What you may notice in some of your smaller animals, uh, like sheep and goat kids, uh, that have been infected with uh, uh, coccidiosis, what you'll notice is, is they eat and eat and eat and they just never seem to grow. They look really, really bad. They have a scruffy, nasty looking coat. They tend to get a bloated big belly on them. Uh, and no matter how much they eat, they just seem like their growth is severely stunted. Coccidiosis is really tricky because 80 to 90 percent of all the adult females and males that you have on your farm are currently infected with coccidiosis. There's no point in testing them to see if they have it because chances are they do already have it. What we're worried about is them transmitting that coccidiosis to the babies. Once the animals get a little older, they tend to develop a natural resistance to the coccidiosis and it doesn't really seem to have too much of an effect on them other than the fact that they are a carrier. However, when it comes to the little ones up to and past weaning, they're the ones that get this. When they get it, once you notice the signs, the signs and symptoms could be bloody diarrhea, watery diarrhea, and then basically they just die. It travels like wildfire. The problem is, is once you notice the symptoms, the damage to that intestinal mucosa and lining is already done, and there's no going back and there's no fixing it. So even if you have an animal, and this is very, very important that you understand this, even if you have an animal that you successfully treat for coccidiosis and they survive, 
the damage is already done and the long-term damage to that animal's health as far as feed, protein, vitamin, nutrient absorption, things like that, growth characteristics, growth factors, and overall thriftiness is damaged. Uh, and in that case, there isn't a whole lot that you can do. So the name of the game is we want to prevent coccidiosis from setting in in the first place. And I want to take a minute to talk to you about that now. All right, so as I said, the adults are generally the ones that carry the coccidiosis. Now listen, coccidiosis is everywhere. Um, it's dropped in stool and feces. They can pick it up from the ground. They can get it simply by licking themselves. They can get it all over. Once it's out and about, it's very, very difficult to uh, contain. It's on pasture, it's on your farm. Chances are you have it. So. I just want you to get that out of your mind. If the question is, how do I avoid getting it? I'm sorry, but the chances are that you already have it. So what the name of the game is, is we want to prevent the little ones from getting a very high load that's going to cause an issue. And the way that we do this is we give medication that helps to slow that process down. Now that medication varies depending on if we're talking about sheep or if we're talking about goats. There's some medications that work for both. There's some medications that only work for one or the other. Uh, the primary ones that we use and that we mix into our feed products that we sell on foundationfeed.com. If you haven't checked Checked out our information on Foundation Feed, check it out right here. But the medications that we use are Bovitech and Decox. And what these do is we start feeding these to our uh, sheep and our uh, does about a month before they're going to start having their babies. And it, we refer to this as cleaning them up. Um, and what it does is it slows down that coccidiosis that they're expelling in their feces. And then as soon as those babies are born, we're gonna continue to feed that to mom. And we're also going to put that into our creep feed as well to help give those babies a fighting chance. Big, big problems happen when you don't preventatively and proactively treat for coccidiosis. So if you're not doing this, I want you to seriously consider it. Now, I wanna do a little side note here and say, be very cautious about the information that you get from individuals online and you need to do your research to make sure that those individuals actually know what in the world it is that they're talking about. Um, I've seen some really, really bad advice recently on coccidiosis in animals. Um, individuals saying, well, there's no medication to prevent coccidiosis. That's not true necessarily, we just talked about it. I've seen people saying, uh, there's nothing for sheep and goats, you need to use this off-label horse uh, medication. That's not true. Um, and then I've heard people say, don't use amprolium, which is also known as Corid. Now, amprolium and Corid is a medication to use if you notice the signs and symptoms of coccidiosis. So we talked about what we can do to prevent it by making sure that we keep it in our feed, but we also need to talk about what we want to do if they actually develop signs and symptoms. As I mentioned, once you're noticing the signs and symptoms, it's probably too late, the damage is done. However, we can potentially save their lives by giving them a medication called amprolium. What amprolium does is it impedes the absorption of thymine to the protozoa and it essentially kills them. Um, long term, this medication is not good uh, to give to any animal because animals need, uh, the sheep and the goats need the thymine as well. So it's meant to be given in a short period of time and it does its job and then you stop. So uh, yes, there are some individuals online that say, oh, well, amprolium causes uh, neurological damage. Yep, that's true. If you give amprolium in an improper fashion, if you give too much of it, it can cause brain damage. If you give it the way you're supposed to, it won't. The other All right, so this is Corid, AKA Amprolium. Um, there's two different ways that you can get this. You can get this in a powder packet or you can get it in this liquid form. I wanna say the liquid form, uh, this runs you about $18, $19 uh, for the powder form. You get a lot more in the powder form, uh, but you have to mix it up and you have to do a lot of weighing and sciencey stuff. Um, so this is the way that I like to do it. 
There's two different ways that you can administer your Corid. Um, you can actually add it to their water um, and you can treat everyone, or you can prep this as an oral drench. I prefer to prep this as an oral drench. To be honest with you, if I start seeing signs and symptoms with one of my babies, I just go ahead and treat all of them. The directions are on the back. It's very easy to follow. I recommend doing the oral drench uh, therapy. That way you're sure that every single animal gets the exact amount that they need in order to be successful in treating the coccidiosis. So with that being said, you can find this anywhere. Um, you can find this at any of the big box stores. You can find this online at Premier One uh, or any other vet supply place. Um, so check it out. Definitely something that I would advise you keep on hand. Um, the problem with coccidiosis is once you realize that you have it um, and it's actually going around, it just runs rampant and the chances of a lot of animals getting in and dying are extremely high. So for 18 bucks, keep it on hand. Uh, it's one of the things that we keep on hand at all times. Let's get back to the video. The other thing that I want to mention is there is zero withdrawal time on the coccidia stats that I talked about, the uh, decox and the um, and the Bovtech. There is zero withdrawal time for that, and it is considered natural uh, for those of you that are raising and selling natural uh, natural meat uh, to markets. When you start getting into this horse medication that people are trying to peddle to you online, it is a 42 day withdrawal period on that. So please, again, do your due diligence, do your research before you start giving stuff to your animals or before you start taking people's words for things uh, regarding things that they don't know what they're talking about. So. Some of you are very anti-medication and I understand that and we appreciate that as well. You know, we talk to you about using natural supplements and talking to you about using natural things. This is one of those areas that we, we got to, you know, we can't cross that line with you. Um, there's a few things that we generally always give medication for um, and that is tetanus because it's there and you can't prevent it coccidiosis because it's there and you can't prevent it. Um, and the other one uh, that we usually give medication for if needed is warming. Now, we do talk to you about all natural warming solutions using copper sulfate, which you can see right here. Uh, but again, when it comes to coccidiosis, it's not worth, uh, it's not worth rolling the dice because you're gonna essentially lose that battle. Go there with me mentally here. Coccidiosis destroys the lining of their intestines. They are going to get inflammation, they're going to bleed from their intestines, and they're going to be in an excruciating amount of pain. If it's worth it to you to not give them medication to avoid this happening, you know, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to say. Um, you know, I look at my animals, I treat them as if they were my kid. I wouldn't have my kid walking around out there bleeding from their rectum with inflammation and in the internal lining of their intestines sloughing off. Okay, so, uh, just go there with me. Now, for those of you that absolutely positively have to go organic and you don't want to have anything to do with anything else, there is, uh, there is some evidence to support oregano oil can help with coccidiosis. So if you absolutely positively must go that route, do some research, look into the oregano oil. I don't know much about it, to be honest with you. I can't find much information about it, but there is anecdotal evidence to show that oregano oil can work. If you need medication, I understand some of you live far away uh, from reputable feed sources. You can't get feed. You can't get these things that you need to mix in with your feed. We are here to help you. We have extremely low cost, free shipping or $1 shipping medicated feed additives and feed supplements that you can get shipped to you at a very affordable rate and you can add to your feed to help battle these things that we're talking about. Again, that's at foundationfeed.com. So with that being said, hopefully you learned a little bit about coccidiosis today. Hopefully this kind of maybe turns the light bulb on for some of you that have noticed some issues and some illnesses in the past that you couldn't quite put your finger on. Um, and hopefully this helps you out moving forward. 
If you're watching our videos and you haven't noticed before, if you look down below uh, at the description area and you click show all, it will actually expand and it will show you lots of information and links for every video that we make. So make sure that you're checking that out. Again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, make sure that you let us know. You can also join our Facebook group at Lanessa Farms Tac Box. Uh, just do a search on Facebook for Lanessa Farms Tac Box. You can go on there. It's where all of us come together. We ask questions questions and they get answered as a group on a forum type setting. So very cool stuff there as well. I am Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today and I look forward to seeing you again next time.